And for humans, too, it's no different. Horace Higgins feels, literally in his bones, that his time is running out. It's tough because uh, you get aches and pains, and my knees are presently uh, getting a little arthritic, and it hurts when I run. And um, it's a, it's, to tell you the truth, it's quite a drag. Horace is 82. But he has a secret that suggests his lifespan could be much longer than you might expect. If you really want to know what it feels like to be getting older, you should talk to my mom. Mom, uh, can you hear me okay? Yes. I have some pictures here from 1894. A picture of you, your brother Harry, and your sister Fern. And it shows you sitting in the chair, and you're looking quite sad. Do you remember that yes, picture? Yes, I remember the picture. OK. My mother said the photographer frightened me. Marion Higgins was born in 1893, which means she's now an incredible 112 years old, one of the oldest people in the world today, with amazing memories. I can remember that I was standing on a business street in Boise, Idaho. I saw a horseless carriage. It was just a buggy going by, but there was no horse. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was kind of peculiar. Uh, it was just a carriage going down the street by itself. Lots of changes. I uh, let some of them go by. I had a chance to learn the computer, and I skipped it. I thought, what's the use of by learning that? It'll go past. At 112, Marion has outlived many of her friends and family. My husband died in 1949. He was uh, 60 years old. We were married 31 years. I have uh, never wanted another man. So what then is the secret to Marion's long life? <laughs> well, just keep on living. That's all. That's all I can tell you. Don't die. Today, many more people are living to old age, but in the whole world, just a bare handful rival Marion's 112 years. The oldest ever was a Frenchwoman, Madame Jean Calmont, who died in 1997, at the incredible age of 122. But that seems to be it. Biologically, our allotted time runs out. Every year, there are more Marion Higgins, but they are not crossing what seems to be an ultimate boundary. We seem to be bumping up against a natural limit of the human lifespan. We share this fixed lifetime with all living things. But there's one thing that makes us unique. Unlike all other creatures on this planet, we are the only ones who know that our time is limited. And this knowledge shapes us as humans. This feeling for the poignancy and transience of our lives has been at the root of so much of what we value in human culture. It's ever-present in our art, literature, and music and it surrounds us in our monuments, histories, and religions. It makes us what we are. Knowing that our time is limited helps to shape the way we view ourselves and see the rest of the world in ways that science is just beginning to discover. Have a look at these pictures. Which do you remember? And which do you forget? 
Psychologist Laura Karstensen uses the pictures as part of an experiment to study the emotional impact of knowing our time is limited. Humans are, to the best of our knowledge, the only species aware of our mortality. Um, not just aware that we're dying when we're dying, but that at any point in time, throughout most of life, we have some sense of how much time we have left. So the first thing I'm going to have you do is just look at a slideshow of pictures. Some of the images have negative emotional value, and some are positive. In her experiments, Laura's team found that young people remember a wide range of pictures. A skydiver and a woman with a baby. Snakes. A man with a bloodied face. But older people consistently forget one set of images. Baby being held in the arms of his mother. Mushrooms. Good glass of brew. Perhaps surprisingly, it's the negative pictures they forget. That's about it. I can't recall anymore. OK. With age, they begin to take account of how much time they have left in life, and in doing so, tend to see what's most important and what's not important anymore, and to let these other things go. So it turns out that as we age and realize that we have, say, just five years left, this fundamentally changes how we see the world around us. Well, I think actually that older people are happy knowing that they only have five years left. It is that. that the, the five years left is what's telling them it's all right to let your guard down. And so being able to stop and really experience the day and to live in the moment is something that may be one of the re secret rewards of aging. In ways we scarcely notice, this awareness of time passing is written deep in every aspect of our culture. It shapes not just how we see the world, but how we see ourselves. Art historian Tarnia Cooper is convinced that portraits have always been crucial to the way we think about time. Portraiture is something which can capture a person in time, a particular moment in time. You have this sense of an individual at this particular moment. And what's interesting about that is that when that goes up on the wall and that's their portrait in their house, is in years to come, in 10 years, in 20 years, in 30 years, you have a sense of, of your own mortality. And of course, implicit in that is an awareness of our own death, awareness that we no longer always look the way that we do. We won't always be youthful. During the 17th century, mortality was placed at the center of high art with paintings known as memento mori. Memento Mori picture is anything, really, that reminds us of passing time, that reminds us of our own transience, of ultimately death and mortality. And it might include anything, all sorts of different emblems, from a skull, perhaps, in a portrait, or an hourglass, or a ticking watch, or a clock on the wall, or, indeed, a candle, a flickering candle, which, of course, will eventually dis extinguish and go out. Or it might include, indeed, rotting fruit, or perfect fruit with a fly at the edge that just might be rotting and ultimately will become as we will. Flesh will rot and go into the ground. OK, it's finished. Great. I can't wait. In the 16th and 17th century, people wanted to have something on the wall that just kept their own pride in check, that kept their humility. It's saying that I'm still a humble person whose awareness of their own mortality is there. Now, 400 years on, we have our own kind of memento mori. Our family photographs. So 